Hey guys, I just wanted to make another quick video on some uh, common issues with Grand Wagoneers. They may apply to other older vehicles, but uh, since the Grand Wagoneer is in pretty much every Netflix movie and every other commercial online, um, there's a lot of people out there purchasing Grand Wagoneers that may have never owned a classic car before. Um, when I was younger, classic cars were just cars. So anyway, um, I'm used to driving them and some of the problems that they have. But a lot of these people nowadays don't have that. And unless you have really deep pockets um, to spend on fixing your Wagoneer, there might be a couple of small issues that I can resolve for you here today that you have, and hopefully it'll all be good. So let's just start with uh, one of the most common problems. So I've already changed my carburetor over to an EFI, but if you don't, if you haven't, um, one small issue is a hard start issue after it's um, been warmed up or hot. Uh, what you wanna do is there is a filter that goes right here. It probably looks something like this. And you wanna make sure that the smaller port here is up. Like this you know you don't want it to be like this or or down like this and basically what that is it's a return line um, and with our modern gas nowadays it evaporates quickly when it gets hot and turns into ga uh, gas obviously and then um, uh, it could cause some hard start issues so that's one really quick possible resolution just turning your filter if it mine was like this when I first got it I turned it like that and it resolved some issues so just think about that um, another thing is why doesn't my four-wheel drive work well basically what you want to do is go back here to this this vacuum canister and just make sure the vacuum lines are hooked up for one thing when I first got this uh, there was no vacuum lines hooked up to it so just check that out uh, as you can see it comes off it goes to a check valve it goes into the red plastic line it goes through the firewall there's a couple green and yellow lines here the other ones open so don't worry about that missing there's not a missing one uh, those green and yellow wires uh, lines go down to the uh, transfer case that actually sh shift into four-wheel drive. So um, just keep that in mind. So it basically tees here and then goes to the manifold and then comes over here and goes to another canister, which eventually goes to the uh, cruise control. But just inspect all those lines, make sure there's no holes in them. And uh, so that, that might resolve your issue right there when you flip the switch. Another small thing is the wiring. So uh, this main wiring harness that comes down here, then it crosses over to go to the solenoid. Um, the, well, there's a hot exhaust right below there. So make sure your wires are not hanging down there because they could melt and uh, ground out and cause some major issues, no start issues. So just check that out. And uh, you can zip tie them to a bracket or something like that. Mine, I had an issue with that. It, my wires melted, so also, when it comes to your air filter housing. So a lot of times on these Grand Wagoneers, since they've been sitting so long, um, or many people have worked on them, a lot of the vacuum lines are deleted or just going to the wrong places. So what you wanna look at on this intake manifold, this is an 87 and it's probably other ones too, is there's a couple vacuum motors on here. And the first one, just goes to a, a basically a heat exchange from your exhaust and it fails open so if there's no vacuum line on it it'll be open so that's not a problem but the second one here um, it fails closed which means you wouldn't be able to see through that there's a door that closes so as you can imagine you can lose a lot of power trying to get that air to go through this this opening here with the door closed back there mine's actually when I had this on here I had put some um, screws through it to hold it open so just watch out for that that could be a major loss of power so just keep that in mind um, what else can I tell you so those are just a few general things so one of the major things that I found when I was looking for Wagoneers in the Midwest um, this one actually came from Arkansas so I didn't have that issue but rust right so I have a little bit of rust here and there but the main issue that you have to watch out for is the frame being totally rotted away large holes in the frame. Now there's resolutions for that. Um, you can get some patch panels. But this area right here is basically on the driver's side, if you can see, where the spring perch connects to the frame. I'll, on many of the Wagoneers I looked at, this was pretty much all gone, rotted away. Where this one is solid, like I said, it came from uh, Arkansas where they didn't use salt on the roads. So that's something to look out for. That's a major thing to look out for. Probably, 
I looked at several Grand Wagoneers and probably nine out of ten was arrested here. So just keep that in mind. So yeah, that that's a few things. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I can tell you. Oh, one little uh, neat little change I did on this particular one was I put a uh, a center console out of a I want to say a early mid 90s uh, Buick Roadmaster. So basically what that does, it gives you a, a, a door here for storage and it gives you um, a couple cup holders. And what I had to do is make sure you get the screws out of the Buick uh, that come with this one. I had to do some grinding on the screw. They're, they're a shoulder bolt is basically what they are. And I had to do some grinding to get it to work, but it functions. Um, I did a poor stain job on it, but it, it's, it, I need to do it again, but it gives it a, it was a tan originally. Now it's kind of like a quarter of a tan to match the interior. So, so that's pretty much it for today. If you guys have any questions or want to know anything else. Oh, oh, but one more thing. So a lot of these Wagoneers, the windows don't work. They'll go down and they won't go back up. So if you have that problem, uh, where you have to help the door back of uh, the window back up and it's making funny noises. If it's pre, uh, I think it's pre 90 Grand Wagoneers have a plastic channel that go inside the doors. There's a video on YouTube about how to change that. It's really easy. I never did it before. I've done it in less than an hour on a couple of these windows. So um, just keep that in mind. It's like removing six screws. You have to finagle the, the frame out of there a little bit, but it's not a big deal. So uh, if you watch that video a couple times, I'm sure you can do it. Uh, like I said, if you guys want to know anything else, just let me know down in the comments. Thank you.